everyone. Today we are here to review Gorinto. I think so, yep. <clears throat> uh, this is a Kickstarter, I guess? Yep, Kickstarter release. I got this uh, a little over a week ago, I think it was. That's so very fresh, very very new. Um, little stats for the game. It's uh, On BGG, it's got a 7.9, which is a really good score. Um, it is an abstract game designed by Richard Yoner, or Yaner, uh, art by Josh Capel, and published by Grand Gamers Guild. Um, Kickstarter version, uh, just so you know, some differences versus retail is the 3D uh, a season marker as well as the uh, bag that you get. It's uh, got the screen printing on it. I don't think it'll have that in the retail version as well as the metal first player marker. Uh, MSRP is $40. The Kickstarter price is $45. Okay. So as far as quality of components, these are these remind me of the old game upwards. Yeah, little tiles. yeah it's kind of like they that. Stack up, except for this year, removing them as opposed to stacking them. And I certainly couldn't spell any words with these. That's for sure. One of the nice things that they did when designing those is that they intentionally made sure that it was easy to stack and easy to unstack, without making it too, so easy that you can flick it over easily. Yeah. So. Although I would say they stuck together pretty good in the bag. So when you were drawing them right. out, it took a little <laughs> effort to, without looking in there to yeah. try to pry them apart. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're nicely printed and they're, you know, they're appealing colors. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. Um, I think the color was they were trying to match the element that they represent. Orange being fire, the lightish mm -hmm. bluish gray is wind, the darker blue teal color is water. Brown is earth and the purple is void. Yeah, I didn't know void was an element. I don't well, remember. I, they were not part of earth, wind, and fire, I'm pretty sure. You're right, but I think this is more uh, designed around yeah, the, the eastern east. side of the world versus the randy side of the world. I, so. I had nothing to do with the formation of earth, wind, and fire. I wasn't even around when they formed. Thank you. I don't think. I might have been. I can't remember what year they formed. I don't know. But uh, pretty sure water was not an element in them either, so there's, to be fair. Uh, card stock, it's it's okay. It's got a texture on the back. Which uh -huh. is, well, considering you're not going to really play with these, these are just for score scoring purposes. Yeah, when you set up the game, you get two sets of two different types of scoring cards, and then that's it. You don't have to sh you shuffle them the one time, and that was it. Yeah, so it's not like you're playing with yeah. a lot, but they still made them textured, which is nice. Uh, a little bit of cardboard as far as your 50 point player marker, but the board itself yeah. and your player board. It's pretty standard cardboard stock. It's nothing special. Yeah, these were actually my com one complaint, I think, was with these because our scores in the game were pretty were high. High, and we I think it could have been even higher. I just got stuck a couple times where I could have probably wrapped a few couple more times, and they only go 50 and 100. My end score was 198, so I'd already wrapped one more. I need at least one more of these, but right. I probably could have used another two or three of them. Not to brag. I'm just saying, if yeah. it's the, the, the I scale, use scale two or three more. If the scale is what it's, you know, mm -hmm. based upon, yeah, yeah. you know. Okay. Okay, I kicked your butt. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just saying that I think that they needed more of these. Um, I do like the metal first player token. That's yeah, pretty, it's pretty cool. cool. It's good and heavy too. Mm -hmm. You can hurt somebody. So that. like when I beat you badly, you can chuck it at me. That's right, yeah. and you'll deserve it. Maybe I'm not the two thousand. Yeah. Anymore. So overall, you know, I'm thinking this probably is, I'd say an eight as far as quality. I agree. I think I was going to give it an eight because the tiles are really nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm thinking upwards. As soon as I saw this, I was immediately <laughs> trying to figure out how do I get a spell words with this? But there was no way I was going to do that with these language, this language. Is it, is it Japanese or Chinese? I'm not for sure. Okay. It's Gorinto. Okay. It sounds like a kaiju. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the name of a kaiju. Um, all right. Uh, well, I guess we can look. I believe it's Japanese because, according to the rule book, a Gorinto is a Japanese memorial shrine. Its five tiers symbolize the five elements that combine to form a perfect understanding. <clears throat> elements gather energy in unique patterns, challenging you with finding the ideal route to balance and harmony. And it might destroy Tokyo. All right, so uh, moving on to theme. I think you just read the theme, basically. I did. That's I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, other than the Japanese uh, uh, kanji that's on the tiles um, and the first player marker, I mean, 
that's it. Yeah. I mean, it, it could have really been anything else. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, there's no theme really. It's layered Not on really. completely. It's an abstract, you know, Absolutely. Theme it's really it, it, that important. It, it, yeah, that's the thing about it, pretty much any abstract, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, do we do an NA here or do we do... I really think so, because it really doesn't apply. <laughs> it's, I mean, I don't want to give it a bad score if it just it, yeah, there isn't one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really not thematic, a thematic game at all, other than the, the, the lettering being lettering from, uh, you know, Japan. Right. And, the, the, the and not knowing thing. Japanese, I'm assuming the, it, the lettering is what the element it yeah. represents. Yeah, so. and the season token is... is yeah you know, a, a Japanese architecture. So there's not a whole lot of theme to yeah. this game. So I just think we NA it. I think we NA it, yeah. I think that's a good thing to do. All right, you're the one who read the rules in this case, so I'll let you it's have the rules. really very basic game. I, as far as initially learning how to play, it's a very simple rule book to read. It lays it out real well. One of the cool parts about the game is that it also give, it gives you an initial setup called the mountain. Um, this is the mountain board, but the actual setup is called the mountain, but they give you different layouts that you could pick from as well for, where is that at? Here on the back, on how to set this up for different ways of approaching the, uh, to play the game, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. And so different setups, which is really, really neat. Um, but other than that, it's, you're looking at two, you're looking at four pages from start to finish. And that's with setup and including all the uh, like table of contents uh, page as well. You know, and honestly, we, it and, and we didn't have a hard it, time learning. It, it would have been excessive if it had more pages. Yeah, you know, we, I mean, it, we've it, seen it, puzzle games recently where we yes. had too many pages <laughs> to cause confusion <laughs> because it would reiterate the same things yes. over and over in different ways. So being so, know, I, I mean, I was real happy with the rule book. I'm wanting to give it an eight. Okay. It, I mean, it flowed. I understood yeah. everything as you explained. You know, it took a few questions answered, but you know, we got it resolved quickly. Um, yep. So yeah, I I think so. All right, gameplay. So this is a really simple game. So there's patterns associated with each of these colors, and there's five tiles laid out on the vertical and the horizontal axes that you use as trigger tiles, basically that you place onto the board, and it triggers the pattern. You collect tiles in the shape of the pattern that they've got, which are generally up to a max of four, except mm -hmm. for the brown tile, the earth, is kind of a different one because it digs the whole tile. You can take right. the whole stack underneath it. So you could potentially get more than four with that one, but that's the only one. Uh, but you have to have acquired what they call understanding uh, the in elements. each of these elements. Mm -hmm. So that means having tiles in play already of the color that you chose to trigger. So at the beginning of the game, you don't have any tiles, so you have an understanding of one for it each one. Which however means, many tiles plus one. Yes, so whatever tiles that you choose, you're only going to get one the first time. But right. then if you trigger that color, the one that you acquire, you'll get two and you'll build up from there. And it can it can ramp up pretty fast if you happen to have the colors that are in play right. for the first round, which is how I got quickly got an advantage in this game. Um, but it's it's kind of an interesting pattern difference because the patterns are sometimes not you have to position them just right on the board or else you're going to to, to, to get off. maximum efficiency yes. of the pattern, uh, but. It's inevitable at some point, especially towards the last half of the game, you're not going to get as many tiles for that pattern with the, with the color tile yeah. that you select because you're just running out of tiles. And there's times where actually it was more beneficial for me not to get more because I was trying to, in our case, the scoring cards we had right. were having different levels of tile stacks, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, it's a different way. Uh, it's a unique way to look at how to score. Yeah, because I was the whole time trying to figure out how do I unbalance my stacks, which of course I didn't do the last two rounds, unfortunately, for to the optimal, but I still managed because I had acquired them in such an ob, ob, right. ob, or obtuse fashion. But the early scoring, the game, you were scoring a lot. I was scoring a lot because I had managed to max Because they were all that. different. Yeah. Uh, so for no matter what game you pick, no matter the pattern, you always get four scoring cards. Two for in-game, two for the end of each season, and there's four seasons. But the cards themselves don't change. Yeah. Once you select them, that's it. For but the they game. have a whole They're, lot, Well, no, that's not, that's not the case. That's all the different languages. So, oh, 
So the actual cards themselves. Oh, never mind. There's uh, there's a element. So you get uh, the ones that score at the end of the game, one for each element. So there's mm -hmm. a total of five. Yeah, one for I each. That. There was so so you just randomly pick two. But then here's the rest. And that, you know, there's still a decent amount of cards, and you only get two of them. Yeah. And then at any given time, it's always a different two. So it's it, there's a lot of replayability and variety as far as scoring goes. And if you can put, want to play it in a different language, there's and, a lot of variety. And, and, yeah, there, absolutely. And the, also, the one other thing that uh, the Kickstarter version that came with was a mini expansion called The Dragon. And so The Dragon is 10 white tiles with red lettering on it. And those are unique in that you can, uh, once they're on the uh, um, the outer, the row that, where you can uh, you can declare what color it is and do that pattern. And when you collect it, you declare what color it is and put it in that stack so you can score it. Oddly, none of these are in Japanese. So I'm assuming there might be another like language set, maybe for different parts of the country. Or uh, parts of the world, I should say, not parts of the country. I don't those, know. Those, yeah, those are definitely, none of those are <laughs> Japanese. I don't know. Uh, so that's basically all there is to uh -huh. play. You play, uh, there's 10 t trigger tiles and you, you, you play until times. there's... There's one less than the number one of players. One less than the number of players. So in our case, we had nine triggered. So, and whoever is lowest in score gets to be the first player, which means they ever always will get one tile advantage right. as far as triggering. Um, so, you know, it's, there's a little catch up mechanism a built bit. in. Um, I really liked it overall. I think it's a classic uh, abstract in the fact that it's pretty easy to learn, but there's a lot of depth to it, and there could be a whole lot of strategy if you really want to dig into it and play it a lot. I think this has got a lot of replayability. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm really glad I got it. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun little game. I don't think there's a lot to it. It's not something... I think it's going to be one like, ooh, let's get that out. It's going to be more like, oh, we got you know 20 minutes to kill. Can we play? See, I, I'm the opposite. I, I think it is something like, depending on who I is like, it's coming over for a game night. Like if I know if it's my like my buddy Vincent, this is something we would play on a pretty regular basis because this is just the type of game that we like to play. Um, but it's like Othello. It's like Pen Pay. It's like Go. It's like all those kind of classic abstracts where, again, easy to learn, hard to master. I don't know that I agree as far as how hard it was to master, but yeah, I, I, I think, think you got a, a good set of cards. Yeah. I think that you took advantage of that. Yeah. But depending on how the tiles come out every game, it could be. Oh, yeah. I think it could ramp up in difficulty. Definitely could be. So, well, as far as your score, what would you. Oh, I'd give it a, I'm going to give it an eight and a half. I really, really liked it. Okay. I'm more of a seven on it. I, I think it's a fun game, but I don't think it's anything outstanding. Uh, it would be, like I said, more of a, a filler game for me. Okay. So that's our assessment of Garento. You know, uh, it's a brand new one on the shelf, so hopefully yeah. uh, it may not, it, well, it's not even on the shelf yet. Uh, I, I know Miniature Market is selling them. I, I think they're on Miniature Market for pre-order. I didn't pre -order. see them on okay. Card House yet. Oh, and the other thing is, is that the Kickstarter version has a nice little metallic finish. I don't think the retail will have that. Oh. So okay. that's about it. All right, so All right, well, thank uh, you. hopefully you enjoyed the mm -hmm. video and like what you saw. Hit the subscribe button. Follow along on our adventures. We definitely would love to have you. Uh, we, you know, hit the little bell, yep. let your notification bell, uh, put comment. some comments. Tell us what abstracts that you like. To play. Yeah, we'd love to know what kind of abstracts are out there because if we don't have it, we'd like to probably check it out because both of us love abstracts. I really do. We really do. So, so. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. All right, till next time. Bye. Bye.